Hi everyone, welcome again to ASP.NET Core and Visit Tutorial. In this video, we will learn one of the most important concepts of ASP.NET Core MVC, which is ViewBag. In this video, we will learn all about ViewBag. What is ViewBag? How to use ViewBag? If I talk about the interview perspective as well, this is one of the most important and most asked questions about ASP.NET Core MVC. So please watch this video very carefully and I hope after watching this video, you will be able to understand all the aspects of ViewBag. Let's start. In this video, we will start from what is the use of ViewBag, how to work with ViewBag and several other things like the scope, how to use ViewBag, the practical examples of ViewBag. We will learn all those things in this video. First of all, let's understand what is the use of ViewBag. ViewBag is used to pass data from one action method to that corresponding view and we can display that data on the view. In very simple terms, ViewBag is used to pass any data, unseen any data from an action method to the corresponding view. This type of data binding is known as loosely binding. So if you are passing the data by using ViewBag and we are using that data on view, then this is known as loosely binding. Now we can have a question in mind, what is the meaning of this loosely binding? Whose binding we are talking about? We are talking about the data binding. We are talking about the binding of data with a view. Suppose we are displaying the data on a particular view, then there are two modes. First one is loosely binding, second one is strongly binding. Loosely binding is if we are using view bag, then we will say that we are using loosely binding. And if you have seen my previous video, we are, we are displaying a list of all the books, also the details of the book, then that type of binding is known as strongly binding. This is also one of the very important question. What is the difference in between loosely binding and the strongly binding? We can pass any type of data in ViewBag. So this is not specific to any particular type. You can pass normal strings, integers, object, list, collection, or whatever type you have in your CSR, then you can pass that type of data by using ViewBag property. ViewBag use dynamic property. Since it is using dynamic property, that is why we say that the binding that we get by using this view bag is known as loosely binding. Now let's learn how can we use view bag. First, we need to create a new property in view bag and then assign some data to it. And basically, in general scenario, this assigning and creating the property happens on controller's action method. So suppose inside one controller's action method, I want to set some data in view bag property. Then first of all, I will write view bag just like this. Then I will press dot and after dot, I will specify the name of my property. Since view bag works on dynamic way, it means at this place as a property name, you can define any property name, whatever you think is suitable for your application. Then you will press equals and now you have to assign the data. This data may be of any type. As I have already told you, whatever type you have in your CSAP, then you can assign that type over here inside your ViewBag property. And now we have to use this property on our view. Since ViewBag is a server-side code, hence to use it on view, we have to use regular syntax, that is at the rate symbol. So if I need to use that property, first I have to start from at the rate, then I have to write ViewBag and the name of the same property that we have used while we were assigning the data to that ViewBag property. So we have to use the same property over here while we are getting the data from view bank. Okay, now let's learn about all these things in the practical scenario. And for that, we have to open our bookstore application. Here we are back to our bookstore application. And if I run this application by pressing Ctrl F5, at this place, you can see that we have a working web application. Now let's open the index view from the home controller. It is available inside this views folder, then the home folder, and then we have this index.cshtml. Suppose at this place, I want to get some data from my controller's action method. Let's learn how to do that. First, we have to set the view back property into the controller's action method. And the corresponding controller is home controller. And inside this home controller, we have to work inside index action method. Inside this index action method, we have to create and assign our view back property. Working with view back is very, very easy. So just focus on the concept 
and I assume that you will learn it completely. First, we have to type view bag. Now, let's see some details about this view bag. So, just click on this view bag and choose either F12 or right click on this one and use go to definition. At this place, you can see the type of this view bag is dynamic. If I see the definition of this one, then it says gets the dynamic view bag. So basically, view bag is all about dynamic that we use into our application. Now, let's assign a property to this view bag. Suppose here I'm writing title. The name of the property can be anything. So for that, we can simply use equals and here we can assign any type of data to this title. We can simply use a number. Suppose here just for the learning first I am starting with integer number. Now this part is done inside this controller's action method. Now we have to access this property onto our index view. So let's go to the index view. And here suppose inside this welcome to bookstore I want to display this data. Since view bag is a C# code, so to use C# code on a particular view, we have to use regex syntax. And since we have to display the value from one variable, so we can simply use one at the rate. There is no need to create the block and simply write your view bag property. If I hover my mouse onto the title property, then you can see the type of this title is dynamic. Let's build the solution. Go back to the browser and just refresh the page. This time you can see we have that 1, 2, 3 property over here into our view. So this is the very simplest example of displaying data with the help of viewback property. Since viewback.title is a dynamic property, so here at this place I can assign any type of data to this property. Suppose here I'm writing my name. Now we do not have to change anything onto our view file because this title is dynamic and this will be resolved at the runtime of the application. So let's build the solution again. Go back to the browser, refresh the changes and this time you can see we are getting a string over here by using viewback. Suppose we are writing this viewback.title and again in the next line I am overriding its value. Suppose here I am writing webgenter. Let's put a semicolon. Again build the solution. Here we are getting webgenter. Why? First we have assigned a value to this title property. Then again we are using same property and we are assigning a new value. It means the first value will be override by the new one. That is why we are getting this new value over there. So this is how we can pass the basic type to our view file. Now let's learn how can we pass the anonymous data type to our view file. Okay, so suppose here I'm going to delete this one first. Inside one Excel method, we can use n number of view bag with different name of properties. Suppose here I'm creating one more view bag property, view bag dot. Here I'm writing data, and here I'm going to assign a new anonymous type to this data. So I can write new, then the body, and suppose id is equals to one, name is equals to suppose Nitis. And you can specify some more property to your data. Now at this place you can see the type of this data property is dynamic but we are assigning a new anonymous type to this data property. So if I hover my mouse over here on this new then you can see the type is anonymous. Let's learn how can we use this viewback.data now on our view file. Let's go to the view file. So suppose over here I want to use this data. So I can simply write at the rate then view bag and the name of the same property that we have used inside our Excel method. So here I have written view bag dot data. Let's build this solution. Go back to the browser and press Ctrl F5 to run this application. This time you can see we are getting the entire data over here on our view file. So we have ID and the name. Since we are getting an anonymous data, so we can assign this anonymous data to a particular type over here inside our view file. Let's learn how to do that. Suppose over here I'm creating a new body place at the rate like this. Then here I can assign dynamic data is equals to and I can use this viewback.data over here. So if you need to fetch all the properties one by one then you can use this pattern and by using this data at the rate data dot ID 
I can get the ID and again if I need to display the name as well then I can again write at the rate data dot name remember you will not get the intelligence over here while you are working with few back properties because the dependency is resolved at the runtime so let's build the solution let's save all the changes go back to the browser and now refresh the changes at this time you can see that we are getting an error onto the browser what is the error runtime binder exception object does not contain a definition for id it means data do not have any information about id and the name it means we cannot pass directly anonymous type to the viewback properties to fix this problem we have to use expando object what is expando object it is available inside system.dynamic namespace okay now let's create a data over here so suppose dynamic i can write data is equals to new expando object and inside this expando object i can assign my data so suppose the id is equals to 1 this time and data dot name is equals to netis let's assign this data to this view group data property like this now again build the solution go back to the browser and refresh the page this time you can see we are getting both the data over here first we are getting id then we are getting the name over here onto this page this is how we can pass anonymous type by using view bag. now let's learn how can we pass an object to our view file suppose over here i'm writing view bag type and then i can simply use new we have a new model into our application which is right now we are using book model so we can simply use book model let's resolve the namespace and inside this book model i can set some data suppose i'm writing id is equals to 5 and i'm writing author i'm just assigning only two properties to this eval.type. type we are basically learning how can we pass this object to our view file now if i want to use this view back type onto our view file let's go to the view okay suppose i want to use it over here br okay now we can simply write id is equals to at the rate view back dot id then i can simply use again let's try br name is equals to at the rate view back dot type dot the name of the property which is author okay let's build the solution and refresh the changes this time you can see that we are getting id is equals to 5 and name is equals to this is author so this is how you can pass the data of different types from your controller's action method to your view by using viewback property we use data assigning to viewback in controller's action method we can use a number of viewback on a single view just like we have used three viewback on one index view in the same manner you can use a number of viewback onto your view file in case we need to send multiple data on a view then viewback is the easiest option there there are some scenarios where you need to pass multiple models or multiple data to your view file then in that scenario viewback is the easiest option Viewback works on dynamic type, hence it does not give any compile time error. This might be a troublesome time. As you can see that we are not getting any compile time error if you are using Viewback. And suppose in case you have mistyped the name of your property. Suppose we are using the title property and you have written the wrong spelling of that title property. And in that scenario, you will not get the compile time error. Let's see how it works. Suppose here I am using title and by mistake I have misspelled the name of this property. Suppose I am using T-I-T-E. I have forgot to write the L. Now let's refresh the page. You can see we are not getting any data over here. Why? Because we do not have any property with this name you will do the new property that we have written. In this scenario you can lose your data. So you have to focus viewback property very carefully. We can pass data using viewback without or with model. Suppose we are passing data with viewback in the index action method and in this index action method we are not passing any model. But in case you are passing any model to your view, in that scenario as well, you can use viewback. So basically, there is no limitation or we can say relationship in between viewback and model. 
view bank works in some different manner and model work in some different manner the scope of view bank is to current action method to view now let's see what is the meaning of this line view bank is only used to pass the data from this action method to its corresponding view if i need to use this view bank property inside this about us then again we have to set the value over here and then only i can use this view bank property onto our about us file in some scenario, if you are assigning the value over here into this index method and you are trying to get the value of this viewback.title inside about us, then in that scenario, you will get null value. Basically, you will not get any value. The scope of this viewback is only from this action method to the corresponding view. We cannot use viewback to pass data from one action method to another action method. We can only use viewback to pass data from action method to view. I hope the concept of viewback will be clear to you. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button, share this video, tell me your feedback into the comment section and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.